this is a very bad sign. This is a very bad sign because right now we're in the best time of our economy since the crash. Things have never looked as good as today. So if they're two years of business and they're just barely breaking even, they're not even near putting in the effort that they should be. And if their argument is I am putting in the effort, my argument is you're putting in the effort and all the wrong things and the trivial stuff that's within your comfort zone instead of all the money-making stuff that's out of your comfort zone that you find excuses to not do and to avoid instead. You're in a really good position, and the reason that person's in a really good position is when you have 36 people on a waiting list or any number of people on a waiting list, I would use that as a marketing angle. I'd be tweeting about that. I would be Facebook videoing about that, live videos, email marketing about that, that I've got a waiting list. You're building a velvet rope around your business, which allows you to raise your rates because now there's a group of people who want in. So basically, whoever wants to pay the most is who I'll take, is what you're saying, without coming out and saying it. Now, what he needs to do is he either needs to take his workouts from 60-minute workouts to 30-minute workouts so that he can open up more time to scale his business. If he's already doing that, then congratulations, you're in a great place, which means you've got to knock down a wall if you have an empty building on uh, either side of you or you gotta find a way to get out of your lease and into a bigger square footage. I'd probably expand by, uh, I'm assuming that if you're bursting at the seams that you're probably making a really good profit, in which case I'd expand by another 2,000 square feet. Uh, number one, your ability to deal with the suck factor, adversity, right? In uh, entrepreneurship and business, there's uh, challenges that come. They're almost guaranteed to come. Challenges. Number two, uh, personality trait needs to be that you can't be approval seeking. In other words, you have to do what's right for your business, not what's popular. And the third thing is emotional quotient. Um, really being in charge of your emotions because there are going to be ups and downs in business. There are going to be people who are emotional around you, both team members and clients. You have to look at it as a relationship. So people who are in a relationship, they're married, they're dating for a long time. What happens after two years? Are we still going to the same restaurants? Change it up. Are we still watching the same movies over and over again? Change it up. Are we still going on the same place for vacation? Change it up. And so if you, let's say, gave the client the results they want and now they're in great shape, now you're in a place where you can start giving them better goals. In other words, hey, Mrs. Jones, I know the scale says that um, you're 125 pounds and that's where you wanna be. However, uh, what do you say we get some definition in your abs? Let's set a new goal. So let's love you up to a newer goal. Let's uh, send some edible arrangements to their office. Let's send uh, two dozen roses to their office. If a client's been with me for that long and they're paying me a substantial amount of money month after month, I'm going to do things for them that I would probably do for my wife. And I'd probably make a custom charm, right? I'd, I'd go to Tiffany's and make a custom charm and, and with whatever, like a kettlebell or something, and then, and then give it to them and say, hey, this is something very unique because we just had our two-year anniversary. But it's really that experience. And of course, recognition is huge. And so I'd make a big deal on like a Facebook Live video, giving them that charm, putting it around their neck, giving them a hug, and finding out what their favorite charity is and donating 500 bucks to it. Those kind of things where they feel very special. When people feel recognized and special, and when they get a gift or a trinket and it doesn't have to be anything expensive that's unique to them, uh, man, they will stay around forever. That's a very good question. So most people are under the impression that if they are closing 12-month memberships and they're getting paid in fulls, meaning that people are paying for all 12 months in full, that they are a badass closer. My argument is you are a great closer if you're closing pretty much everybody on paid in full. But that also tells me that you are not working for the sale and we gotta be working for the sale. So there's still room, plenty of room to raise your rates because really less than 30% of the people should be taking your program and paying it off in full. So if more than 30 people are paying it off in full, it's simply because you're not charging what you're worth. So I say raise your rates and make it difficult for you to get a paid in full uh, so that you can get higher monthly fees and increase your profit margin. So, um, 
closing paid in fulls are good for the ego, but they're not good for the profit margins, and ultimately we want profit margins. Yes, yeah, uh, the most recent book that I reread was Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield. I think that's a book that most people should read. And then a new book that came out recently is The 5% Rule. So thing number one that I had to really overcome was my poor leadership skills. Um, I too, was at a place where I was approval seeking. I didn't want to do things that were against the popular thought. And so I figured if I just kind of go with the flow, then everything will be great. What I realized very quickly, and it's uh, weird having three of my team members here, is so I got to create structure, I got to create discipline, I got to create expectations, and I got to create high expectations. And when I did, I found that everybody at my headquarters stepped up to my new expectations, uh, appreciated the fact that I created structure and discipline, uh, and those who maybe fought it and dug their heels in, we just let go and parted ways and said goodbye because we weren't a good fit. So I stepped up as a good leader and that was a challenge for me because I wanted everybody's positive feedback. Now I don't care about everybody's positive feedback and approval because I know that my job is to do what's best for my business and for my team. Thing number two is that I had to get over what the competition was doing. I kept looking at what is the competition doing? Uh, how are they gonna affect my business? How are they gonna affect my growth? How are, affect, how are they affecting my price points? And I realized that they have zero impact on me. And the only time they have impact on me is when I follow them, keep my eyes on them, keep them on my radar. So now I just pretend I have no competition because as far as I'm concerned, I don't. I'm the best at what I do. And I've got an obligation to sell my product and services at their highest prices because the higher people pay, the more compliant they are and follow along on your programs. And so those are the two big things I did where personality is concerned that uh, really just catapulted my business. All right, so Jacob, you, I mean, if you're in the Inland Empire, dude, you are an hour and a half from my next fitness business summit which is coming up here at the end of March. But let's say this video comes out by the time you get to the Fitness Business Summit. But anyway, if we're even filming this, then Jacob is on my email list or following me on social media, so he better be at Fitness Business Summit. Um, otherwise, I will go to the Inland Empire, find him, and choke him out, number one. Number two, um, he can just buy the footage afterwards. But buying the footage afterwards is not the same as experiencing it in person, feeling the energy, shaking the hand of the person who was just on stage who gave you that nugget, and then getting more nuggets from them during a, a bar break, a dinner break, a lunch break, or whatever. So highly recommend going to events, going to masterminds. Uh, best place to get all that information about my stuff is to go to my blog, uh, ptpower.com. People are not paying for a 30 minute workout or 60 minute workout or to work with a personal trainer. We got to get that out of our head. People are paying for results. That's the only reason they'll pay. And so one, deliver the results as fast as you can. And then when you deliver the results, take before and after pictures, take videos and publicize them all over all the time, even when you're sick of publicizing them, because there's still 10 other people in your community who need you, who haven't seen those before and after transformation pictures. That's thing number one. And the more transformational pictures and, and videos you have, in other words, an abundance of social proof or dramatic, dramatic demonstration of proof, the better your business will be because you'll start developing your reputation of being a badass and justifying your $197 per month price, if not $297 per month price. And then the second thing is where reputation is concerned, we can just dovetail right into that, is first impressions are everything. And so if your facility looks clean and solid and everything matches, nothing is torn up, uh, the thing, walls don't need touch of paint and, and we don't have like plastic folding chairs from Costco, but actual like cool benches and couches and stuff for people to sit on, their expectations for what they're gonna pay and the results they're gonna get are met there instead of a kind of a disconnect. Mm -hmm.